that's funny. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Stepsister from Planet Weird and I have a guest and it is Max. Stepsister from Planet Weird is a 2000 Disney Channel original movie. It's directed by Steve Williams, cinematography by David Egby, editing by Alan Cody, music by Phil Marshall, and it's written by Chris Matheson. <laughs> Uh, I've covered everybody in previous videos that we listed and linked in the description. The film is based off a book of the same name written by Francis Lance. Shall we compare? Sorzizel is a 99-year-old telepathic pink ball of gas from Zirculon 6, a planet with purple grass, yellow sky, wind, and literally nothing else. Zirculonians reach maturity at 200 and can transform their body from gas to liquid to solid and back again. Zircolonians make a living being objects like water slides, or searching the galaxy for life-giving helium. Sweezel's mom left her dad flea box for being weird and enjoying being solid, then was killed by a strong wind because she wasn't solid at the time. Sweezel moved to where her dad mined helium, saw TV broadcasts from Earth, and decided to move there in a stolen ship. He names himself Cosmo Cola after Soda, and Sweezel, Ariel. Ariel keeps a diary, the entries of which comprise chapters of the book and alternate with diary entries from Megan Larson, the daughter of Kathy Larson, who Cosmo almost immediately becomes engaged to. Ariel misses her boyfriend, Fra, who she communicates with through a special telepathic telephone her dad thinks is hidden from her. She hates being a human who can't transform her body or read and transmit thoughts like she did before she arrived on Earth. Ariel starts school with Megan, where she is immediately super popular with everyone, including Megan's surfer crush Cutter. Ariel has no interest in Cutter. Her boyfriend dumps her. Ariel asks him not to tell anyone they ran away because there's a rumor the last Sir Colonian who ran away had to work as a lug nut forever, and he's like, okay, bye. Ariel and Megan hate each other, but they unite to end their parents' engagement. Cutter teaches Ariel to body surf, and her arms turn to liquid, which she realizes she can do because she had a lot of helium that day. She ups her helium intake and can morph most of her body and read minds again. She learns her dad and Kathy really love each other. Megan discovers Ariel's telephone thing, briefly sees and hears FRAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAA
I gained pretty much no insight from reading the book compared to uh, seeing the movie, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, they are not the same. <laughs> no, no, no. I think the only thing that's the same is like they they can be gas. <laughs> like that's it. Yeah, but they're not bubbles in the book. Like that's not a thing. So. Yeah, yeah, they're just clouds basically like yeah. balls of gas they're not bubbles but, but it is interesting because when ariel in uh the, the the movie is talking about herself she does say that they are pink balls of gas but then you don't really see them that way i guess they're kind of pinkish bubbles but anyway yeah i mean the cg could use some work yeah they may have not have figured out the cg at that point i don't know yeah yeah when they were doing that narration but. yeah so you requested to be in this video a yes. long time ago. I did. I called dibs just in case uh -huh. anyone else was going to jump in there. Uh-huh. And I I want you to kind of take it away. What about Stepsister from Planet Weird made you like be like I have to be in your video? I you know, do you like are you obsessed with this movie? Do you love it or do you just like think it's great or do you hate it and you wanted to be part of it or what you love it it's like <laughs> you're guess. obsessed with it uh i mean i'm fairly obsessed with it i hadn't revisited it until recently but i mean you may be able to relate to this you ever have that film that you and your friend just happen to watch and then you're obsessed with it and the two of you just quote it to each other for years and no one else knows why you're so into it Th that was me with this movie and my friend Craig. We didn't actually watch it together, but mm -hmm. I was actually with my parents at probably uh, one of the many antique car shows that they brought me to uh, out of state. And we were staying in a hotel and I happened to catch this as it was premiering. And I was just like so into it, thought it was so funny. And my friend happened to see it. And so when I came back to school, after that weekend or whatever, we we're both like, oh man, what about this line? What about this line? And then like forever, we we're just quoting like, I fear the wind and like, I do not like food and stuff like that. Okay, okay. So, and how old were you around this time? Uh, let's see, 2000, I'm 33 now. I don't know, do the math. <laughs> okay. All right. So you were pretty prime age for this movie. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah, definitely. This is what I was watching. I, I was watching most of the Disney Channel original movies when they came out. Yeah. Um, although there was some, and I've been commenting on your channel, so if anyone goes and watches the videos and sees my obnoxious comments about, like, this no, no, is no. what I think about it. Um, They're not you'll, obnoxious. You'll... Max is a treasured member of the Disney community. He has found many movies for me. His link is always in the description. Go check him out. Um, but I, there, there are a few that just like completely slipped under my radar. Like I don't even remember commercials for them. Uh, I remember this one repeating a few times and uh, just to sort of test the waters to see how biased I was, I showed this to uh, my Discord. We had like, yeah. a movie night where we watched this and they run the gambit from like being from like 16 to about my age and they all thought it was decent i don't know if they all if anyone like truly like loved it uh but they, they all said it was like a, a good little time yeah well cool i had never seen this this was one of the decoms so i'm in a string of decoms right now uh, that i haven't seen so like you know like i smart house 13th year those were like my jam and halloween town and all those and then there's this like weird gap of movies I haven't seen, like Ready to Run and The Other Me and Quince and Stepsister from Planet Weird and like um, Phantom of the Megaplex and Mom's Got a Date with a Vampire. All these I haven't seen. So it was fun to watch Stepsister from Planet Weird, not only because I hadn't seen it ever, so I'm an adult, so I'm going to have a different reaction to it now as an adult than I would have had had I been seven years old when it came out. Um, but I also went in knowing that you had some kind of feeling and history about this movie. So um, I, it's interesting. I don't have a ton of notes, you know, which I normally say is a good thing. <laughs> it <Yeah>. means <laughs> I spent more of the movie invested in it than I did writing notes about it. Yeah. Um, but why don't you, why don't you uh, take it away and uh, talk to us about this film? 
So I, I've given you my subjective history of this. I think my objective view of it is, um, I think that it's just such a brilliant idea to have like the two feuding like stepsisters and not the alien idea necessarily, um, but having one stepsister who feuds with the other because the other is popular, but then the other doesn't like them because they're like popular, like in the, like they're miserable in high school because they are beloved and they are fitting in, you know? Like, oh, I don't <laughs> want to talk to you people. Why are you around me? Like that sort of thing. Like, why do you find me attractive? Ew, ew, ew. Love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's that. Uh, I think that this is, I don't know, like having watched some other ones, this feels a little bit more quirky than others. And there is, in the very, very finale, there is some drama with uh, the emperor or whatever role he is coming in, right? And 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 that's that. I feel that's a better better finale than the the big climax of the book of the little brothers in a cave, and Ariel has to stretch her arms to save him. That's that was yeah not great. Um, uh, but I just like that this one's lighthearted. It's got like the quick gags and the cuts, like cutting to like the Yukon and cutting to Cutter falling down the mountain. The Yukon killed me both times. <laughs> yes. Uh, and also just how quickly we see Megan fall out with the popular group the first time. Of just like the girl whispers in the other girl's ear and just goes, you are not related to Jewel. And then... <laughs> Well, I have a cousin who looks like her. Go away! And like that's it. And that's her <laughs> that's that's her, you know, origin story of why she's out with the popular kids. That girl that is like the main popular girl was also the main popular girl in Xenon. Yeah. She's it's been very fun for me to watch these DCOMs and see all these side actors that I'm like, this is why I know yeah. who you are. <laughs> it's because you were a side character in like 30 DCOMs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, and and our uh, our Maggie Megan Larson, you know, she's in Thirteenth uh, Year, right? She's in Thirteenth Year, and then she was in The Duke. Oh, <laughs> never watched Which, that. Yeah, don't. <laughs> yeah, I watched Thirteenth Year Thirteenth Year a few times, but I wasn't as into it. But anyway, going back to this film, um, also the ridiculous nature of just like how absurdly into Ariel everyone is at the school to the point where like they're, they're dressing they're, like her <laughs> they're yeah and they're they're all like hitting the bike rack and falling over like wearing the football helmets like they're trying to recreate that moment and there's I don't know if you caught it but there's a moment where like all the girls are wearing shirts that say I'm protecting my essence yes yes I did see yeah. that I just yeah uh so there's that aspect of it and then there's the just cosmo cosmo is such a great character so fun so likable so often you have like the wacky dad or like the dad who's like trying to win over the stepdaughter and you're like Ugh. and like cosmo is so likable throughout and i'm like i'm never really on megan's side <laughs> Like in terms of that, like I, I get why Ariel would seem like off-putting and like, you know, and arrogant and all of that. Um, but Cosmo is so likable. And my favorite Cosmo moment is when he decides to, he's gonna show how manly he is at the pizza place. Oh my God. By having a dummy dressed in the same cowboy outfit as him vouch for him. Just like, and just like, am I a respectable dummy? And then he like looks <laughs> at his fiance to sort of like see her reaction, I guess. <laughs> he is a quirky man. I like their house. I love the set deck in this movie. I think the set deck is really amazing. The, all the production design. I think they did a really good job establishing the two different households. Definitely. And just the insanity that is the Cosmo house. <laughs> yeah. 
I also felt he did a good job of making them hiding the fact that they're aliens seem realistic. I felt like he he covered for Ariel well when she was like sort of off-putting and he sort of like was realistic at like sort of sweeping some of the weirdest stuff underneath the rug. Yeah. 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 I'm with you. Yeah. By the way, you might be able to guess uh, Serena Sue is not a white lady in the book. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. of course, of course. Yeah. Also, a weird thing about the book is that the dad, it's not that he's like a strict businessman, it's that he's like too much of a slacker, which makes no sense because then why is he into the free spiritedness of Serena Sue and also why is the mom attracted to the free spiritedness in contrast to like Cosmo? So, yeah. Plus, Cosmo doesn't have the whole diamond thing that he has in the movie. He's just broke. He actually ends up working for, uh, I guess she's Mrs. Larson. I don't know if she kept her husband's Kathy? name. Kathy? Yeah, Kathy. That's right. Kathy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had I had something I was gonna say and then I forgot. Oh, I think my favorite. So my favorite part of this. So early decom decoms in the two thousand early two thousands. Um, a lot of them have like the voiceover or straight to camera point of view or like the main characters telling the story. And it's been fun for me to see which ones like are kind of, for lack of a better word, lazy about it and which ones are way more involved and put a, their own spin on it. And I know it's the way the book is because you said it's like diary entries or every other chapter or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think they did a really good job of putting that in the movie. I really enjoyed that they'd tell it from Megan's point of view and then it'd like rewind and it would be told from Ariel's point of view. I really enjoyed that. I thought it was a really clever way to tell the story and also get you on both sides. Right. Yeah. Um, and I know that you like the book has the different point of view chapters, but it's hard to do that in a movie usually without, you know, favoring a character or, you know, whatever. Um, but I really liked, and then obviously over the course of time, it becomes less switching the point of views and they're together and we're doing less of the like, okay, we saw it from Megan's side. Now we're seeing it from Ariel's side. Now it's just their story together. And, um, I really enjoyed that. I thought that was, um, really clever and a good way to put a spin on it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like that as well. It's funny. I distinctly remember talking with someone from my Boy Scout troop um, after this movie premiered. And I was like, boy, did you guys watch Stepsister from Planet Weird? Wasn't it great? And I remember this one guy was just like, oh yeah, I didn't like that. It was annoying how they kept going back and forth. I was like, just move along. And I was just like. <laughs> Sad. Yeah. Uh, but you, you're, I feel like you, you're kind of holding back here. Tell me uh, your feelings on this. You know, I don't. What, what was your journey watching it? <laughs> I okay. So the, I have my biggest. Like, I mean, I don't have a lot of notes. Like I said, which is normally a good thing because I was more invested in watching it. I don't think it's like the most fantastic movie ever made. I pretty much agree with your Discord people, which is it's decent. It is by far and away not the worst decom. That's for sure. No, no. <laughs> but it is definitely not the most magnificent decom there is. I think the beginning was kind of rough. I think it's a little like fumbly. And then I think the Foley was horrendous in the beginning. <laughs> uh, I think they did a really bad job <laughs> of <laughs> sinking when uh, characters were touching items and setting items down and just the Foley in general, I thought was really bad. I, that's, I normally, some of my biggest notes when it comes to like the decoms or television releases is normally about like sound, like the ADR is not placed well. So it doesn't sound like they're back in the environment they're in. It sounds like ADR or like, yeah. wow, that didn't match up with their lips at all. What were they doing? Like, I yeah, noticed that, stuff like that. That's one of the only sound things I do notice because I did a short film called Computer Fighters, available now on YouTube. Um, and we had to, we didn't actually, we couldn't actually do good audio when we were recording because we sort of just did some smash and grab filming for that. So we did all ADR um, and it turned out quite well, I think. 
Nice. Um, but it, it gave me an appreciation for that and how you do it well and how you do it bad. So Yeah. Foley and ADR are really hard. Yeah. And well, and sound design in general for the sound stuff that isn't being touched by an actor, but go ahead. So I, I forgot to mention, uh, now that we're both criticizing it, there's one thing I've never liked about this film, and I think you're going to agree with me. I hate the love resolution of, oh, you you go with that guy who likes me, and I'll go with that guy who likes me, and everything's solved. Woohoo! Different hair colors. Like, yeah. I, I That's always been dumb and rushed, and that's, again, a thing that's not from the book. I, I like... As I like Cutter being a more likable character. That's great because Cutter is a very fun character in this. That's good, but it is a bit more re realistic. That they're just like, oh, actually, that guy's a creep. Don't talk to him. And then, like, you know, they just move right. on. Right. Yeah, I didn't like the. Uh, I definitely am with you. I hated the like. It's basically like trading. Like they just decide. Oh, you know what? Like Megan's just like, oh, you know what? I'm over this guy I've had a crush on for a million years, and yeah. I'm gonna have a crush on the guy you were actually in a relationship with. Like what? <laughs> no. So um, I'm in agreement with you there. Yeah. Obviously. Also, we have to say before I forget, there is a parent death in this movie. Yes. Yes. Ariel's mom. May she rest in gas. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's another weird part where. Uh, she's like, I want to go home with mom, and Cosmo's like, mom is thinning out. Like it's just weird and dismissive. It's almost like, like Ariel doesn't know. It's just an odd. Oh, I didn't think about that line delivery. Yeah, I don't know. it is weird. I guess there's two things that bother me about the film. Two, only two, only two. That's it. The rest is perfect. So ten out of ten. No, that's not my rating. <laughs> um. But yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't feel a need to like rip into the movie by any means. I don't think it was that bad that it needs to be ripped into. Um, I'm pretty much like middle of the road. I think it's an average, decent decom. I don't, you know, I definitely go. Ha I'd recommend watch it. Everybody, go watch it. Give it a chance. It's fun. Um, it's a one of the more like, like you said, how it's not it's more quirky and more like of a fun decom than it is some of the others um and i would agree with that yeah um you know i think the cg needed work and i think the fully think, needed work I, th I, I think the cg for a made for tv movie at that time i think it's decent i think the bubbles I agree. look fine they're bubbles um i think the excuse me the um the cubing effect is okay. It looks kind of fun. Oh yeah, I forgot um, about the cubing effect. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think it's. I think it's all right. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what's really bad is when, like, Ariel is like starting to like become a bubble, and they just have like a wavy like ripple effect on her body. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I don't. I don't have anything that's like. This movie was bad because I don't. Yeah. I think it was decent. Well, before we get to our rating, I did say I had a surprise for this video. Okay. <laughs> You're like, oh boy, this could be anything. And uh -huh. then in comes the guy who plays Cutter, who, who's hanging oh out in the kitchen here. <laughs> no. So, all these years, you know, that, uh, that I've known of this movie, that I had watched this movie. There's been one question in my mind, and that question is, what does a yogurt flavored chip taste like? Is it weird? So I had sent to me from Turkey, they have yogurt and herb chips. Official Lay's. So they look like sour cream and onion. What? They look like sour cream and onion. They, they look like it, but it is, in fact, yogurt. Interesting. Yeah, yogurt and herb, I guess. Oh, my God, please. Let's find out. Well, they smell like normal chips. Look like sort of sour cream and onion. Let's find out if they are weird or kind of weird, the way Cutter describes them.
It's good. It's like a slightly different sour cream and onion. It's delicious. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Yogurt and what is it? The site that I got them off of described it as yogurt and herb. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you can kind of see it there on the bag. Yeah, wow. Interesting. Yeah, these are from Turkey. Hey, thanks, Turkey. Shout out to Turkey. I paid way too much to have these shipped to me, but it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable. I love that. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Well, okay, Max. What would you rate okay. it? Um, so maybe not as high as you might expect, but I'm going to give this a solid seven bubbles out of ten. Oh, very good. Very good. Oh, that's funny that you did bubbles because my thumbnail is going to have a bubble in it. <laughs> oh, I could say seven chips. I mean, no, no, no. Bubbles. bubbles. I like bubbles. Okay. Bubbles is okay. good. Um, I my So it's funny to me that your rating is seven because then I feel like my rating is appropriate. My final rating is five bubbles out of ten. Straight middle of the road. Five bubbles out of ten. Um, our total movie count is... And our parent death toll is... <laughs> Cry count is still the same. Uh, go follow Max. He literally... Any movie that I have made a found video for in the last however long is because Max found it for me. And he has been finding movies before I can even not watch them. So I'm able to watch <laughs> them. He's got the list and he's been cranking it out. He's is so incredible. He's super talented. Go join his Discord. They have so much fun over there. Um, literally, he's linked in the description always under my friends and family now. But I'll put his link up farther so you guys can check him out. He's amazing. Send all the thank yous. He also helped me out during Celebration Month a lot. So everybody just give Max some love, okay? Um, if you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, and you'll find out what movie I'm watching when I put out videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join Patreon because I have a tier starting at just $1. And benefits do come with that. Buy merch. Merch is the best. Max just bought some. Um, yeah. Is there anything you want to say, Max? Do you want to plug anything else besides all your socials? Uh, oh, listen to a podcast that I'm a cast member on, Sporadic Phantoms. Um, you may hear Jess's voice on it at, on some episode as well. I will not uh, tell you what episode. Go there. listen to them all. <laughs> Anything else? No, that's it. Awesome. That's amazing. The podcast is great. Absolutely. Go check that out. I really love it. Um, and okay. Until next time, comment, like, and subscribe, but I'm not in charge of your life. You are, so you do you and don't be. What's the emperor's name? Oh, who cares? <laughs> it starts with a Z, I think. Zerg. No. Zerg. Oh, Toy Story. <laughs> Okie dokie, bye.